have to ask her some questions. Okay, we might come with you. Yeah, let's go. Come on, this way. Lola! Is there any problem? Can you help me with our project, Lola? I'm with my classmates today, and this is Shanley. Good morning. And this is Nila. Hello. Gentlemen, please feel free to make yourself at home. And what about your project at school? Um, since our topic is about the indigenous tribes of the Philippines, we have to make a research about them. And we chose the Ifugao tribe. Yes, it's true. And it's easier for us since you visited Ifugao last year. So can we ask you some questions, Lola? Okay, it's fine with me, Apo. Yes, so Nilo will ask his questions and we will write down. Okay, Lola. So, are Ifugaos known to be artistic? Yes. Actually, one is an amulet. Um, what is an amulet? These are charms. They believe that amulets can protect the people from mysteries. How about the Banawi Rice Terraces, Lola? Oh, that? It is a popular attraction. The bull owls and the rice terraces are the most iconic images in the Ifugao culture. Lola, what are bull owls? Bulls? Bulls are wooden figures. They use it during rituals. Wow, cool! They stay believe in gods. They live in mountains. What do you expect? I was amazed. Shh, both of you, shut up. Lala, what is it? In fact, I know a story about if a god is in a god. Story time. This will Shh. be. Shh. Keep quiet. It was in the mid December. In the Philippines. He was known as Ipi. Philip Latak and Ifugao was working from a big city. They were the best of friends. Sam Christie and Philip Latak. Sam Christie, before going back to Boston, wants to buy an Ifugao god as a souvenir. As a friend, Philip wants to help him find one. The bus station was actually a narrow side street, which sloped down to a deserted plaza, one of the many in the summer capital. Hey man, I miss Rice One. I hope there's still a jar when I get to my grandfather's. He may not be as sick as my brother's throat, as long as a jar of wine, he's still powerful and strong, and he can live longer. I remember New England in winter. When it gets really cold, I can still go around quite naked by your standards. And I sent home some clippings this week, something in the Manila papers about it being chilly. And it was only 68. My old man will get a kick out of that. Wow, that's cold. So anyway, can you tell me more about your grandfather? Well, basically, your father was a village doctor and he's 80 years old. He treated medical diseases in our community and he also treated me. I remember when I was sick because I ate something undesirable. He treated me by letting go away the bad spirits that possessed my body. Wow, that was, must be quite some night. Hell, I was never so embarrassed in my life. Yeah. Bus finally come and Sam Christie, because he was a foreigner, was given the seat of honor to the next driver. It was an old bus with woven rotan seat and side entrances that admitted not only people, but cargo, fowl, and pigs. They did not wait long for the bus, filled up quickly with government clerks going to their post and hefty igorots, with their bare feet or with canvas shoes who sat in the rear, talking and smelling of the earth and strong tobacco. They arrived on a remote village surrounded by the greenery of the mountains. It was surrounded by fog and hats made of stone. They were both greeted by the Ifugao locals, who Philip seemed to recognize instantly. He then introduced Sam to a brother he called Sadak. Philip was greeted coldly, for chose to leave his tribe 
to live and work in the city of Manila. They then proceed to greet Philip's grandfather. Grandfather! Grandfather! I have come home! Welcome back, my grandson. So good to have you back after so long. Grandfather, if you don't mind me asking, where can I get a wooden gun like yours? So you didn't come here to visit us. We just wanted to get the wooden gun. Oh, it was for my American friend who came along with me asking for a souvenir. No, you know that I don't like strangers, especially those foreigners, because they took everything from me. Philip hurriedly came down with a crestfallen look. He told Sam that they should not have bothered with his grandfather because he would not tell them anything about it. He apologized to Sam and they prepared for a banquet. Not getting what they wanted, they stayed for a few days and eventually decided to convince Sam that he was still the wooden god from his grandfather. I have an idea. What is it? Tonight, during the celebration, I will go and steal the wooden god of my grandfather. Are you crazy? That's wrong. You're the one who wanted the wooden god as a souvenir. And I promise to give it to you before you go. Not like this. Let's just go home. It's important to your grandfather. Just go rest. Leave this problem to me. Sam had no idea what time it was. But it must have been past midnight. The clatter woke him up and without risking, he groped for the flashlight. He lifted a mosquito net and beamed the light at the dark from which had posed at the door. It was Philip the tank, swaying and holding on to a black, bloody mass. Sam let the ray play on Phil's face at the flash on his breast, the sacrificial blood, and finally on the thing. Sam, I've got it. You should not have done that. It's too late. I've already got it. The next day, Philip found out that his grandfather had died. He felt regret and guilt and hurriedly left Sam. Sam searched for Philip and found him in his grandfather's house, where he was wearing traditional Ifuga clothes. He told Sam to go ahead as he won't be joining him, and that he will stay at the tribe to carve a new wooden god to replace the one he stole. And that was the story of the god's dealer. What an amazing story! So what happened to Philip after that? He stayed in his tribe and became the one who carved the gods as a way for him to atone for what he did.